I know the girl who lives there. Lived. Lived there. Before she did a bunk. <laughs> Used to work in the local calf. Oh, Bato rented it. Sublet it. Her daughter was staying here. God, what a sight she was. Then this pig. Although, it's better than it was. Well, it could do with a good bottoming. <laughs> oh, somebody's had a go. In fairness. Ooh. What's that? Oh, she'll have to pay for that cleaning professionally. Good luck with that. What is all that? People are filthy, Sean. A couple left one of my properties in a football ground. Satanic symbols on the wall, blood, blim burns. I mean, answers on a postcard. I'm allergic to grime. So it'd just be you and your lad? Yeah, he's 16. I won't lie, this phone's been buzzing off the hook, so if you are interested, I won't hang about. Well, I'm gonna have a think, OK? Bye. All right, that's me. What did that take away? Two spring rolls, Indonesian stir-fry, udon noodles. Already called it in. Way to go, Swain Rooney! <laughs> <laughs> Insubordination, PC Tinker. Hey, do you know, someone once wrote OCID on my locker two years ago. No, that's different, you should have reported it. Yeah, well, I wiped it off. Banner. If I had a pound for every time I heard Swain's world, or totally excellent, <laughs> honestly. Hey, up. What now? Two weeks ago, I reported a missing. Sorry, what? Lauren Bolton, two weeks ago, I reported her missing and you've done nothing. Can I help? Yeah, we think you should investigate her disappearance. Because apparently there's bloodstains in a flat. Rewind. Lauren Bolton, I thought she was ghosting me. Now I think she's dead. Important part of the word stakeout is takeout. You have to choose carefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I once had a car with someone who ordered a Chinese chopsticks the lot. They screamed go, go, go on the radio and he ended up with a lap full of egg for young. <laughs> or is it you favour then, Sarge? Well, no one loves a Chinese or a Korean more than me, but for a stakeout, you can't be a good old fashioned bacon butty, in my opinion. You just need to go easy on the ketchup. Which that clearly isn't. Do you reckon that's blood? Yeah, it could well be. Or someone could have just cut a finger and tried to close the curtains. Or, or had a nosebleed. No, it's unlikely. See the direction of the staining? The, the motion's upwards rather than a, a smear or a dripping down. Like a spattering. Yeah, possibly. But let's not jump to any conclusions just yet. We need Socko in Sharpish. Then we'll have a better idea. Yeah. We just want some more background. I'd appreciate some foreground first. Was it a blood stain? We're looking into it. We can't discuss an ongoing investigation. Look, the best way you can help us find Lauren is by answering my questions, so we can obtain the clearest picture possible. OK. Would you mind giving us some privacy? Why are you going to get the thumb screws out on him? At this stage, we'd like to keep any information within as tight a circle as possible. If your nephew says something of relevance, we won't want it leaking into the community. I'm hardly going to do that, am I? I can handle things. OK. Listen, if they come on strong, just holler. I'll be in the bedroom. You, um, You mentioned Lauren had bruises, Bobby. Do you know how she came by them? She made up this story about a fall, but I knew she was lying. She had this ex. Have you got a name? No. Uh, she kept dead quiet about him, but I could tell she was scared of him. I bet you that's where the bruises came from. OK. Had they been seeing each other a while? Since before I knew her, but that's not long. You said a flat was in a state when you first reported her missing. That's right. Well, it's not now. Well, Roy went and cleaned it up. Roy Cropper. He owns the cafe across the road. He used to employ Lauren? Until she disappeared? Well, until he sacked her. So, why would he clear out Lauren's flat? 
So Evelyn could get a deposit back off the landlord. Evelyn? She's a friend of Roy's. She was going to vacate the place, but Roy persuaded her to sublet it to Lauren. Gave her a job at the cafe and paid her first month's wages up front so she could pay the rent. Why? Is he some sort of relative or family friend? Nah, he just likes helping people. Anyway, when Lauren was gone and the flight was a tip, the landlord was threatening to send Evelyn the bill for a deep clean. So Mr Cropper went in and cleaned up? And paid Lauren's outstanding rent. He just didn't want to see Evelyn out of pocket. Obviously. I think we need to pay Mr Cropper a visit. We were on friendly enough terms. Even though you sacked her? She took some money from a customer's bag. I had no option but to dismiss her. She was upset, but I think she understood. Why did you give her a job in the first place? I believe her history was quite well known locally. Uh, she was trying to make a, a fresh start. That's um, clearly struggling. She was vulnerable. I suppose. She reminded me of, of someone who I'd helped in the past. Working here had helped that person to um, find their feet, so to speak. Unfortunately, it didn't have the same effect on Lauren. So you're quite the good Samaritan, then? I wouldn't go that far. You're too modest. I've heard you arranged Lauren's accommodation, you gave her an advance to pay her first month's rent, you cleared her outstanding debt and then cleaned up a flat. I couldn't see my boss doing that for me. As I say, I was hoping that she might be able to turn her life around. And how was settling her debts and cleaning a flat help with that? Well, it wouldn't. The notional tenant is a friend of mine. She stood to lose money if the flat wasn't returned in good order. As I persuaded her to sublet to Lauren in the first place, I felt it was incumbent upon me to clear the flat up and to pay the outstanding rent. What did you do with her things and the rubbish she cleared away? Well, I gathered together her personal effects, laundry, which is upstairs, and then uh, disposed of the rubbish in the bins at the rear of her flat. Has there been a collection since? Well, not on a Monday, no. Good. We'll need to go through it. And I'll need Lauren's things, too. Oh, certainly, yes. Um, they're in the wash at the moment. In the wash? So they'll be ready when she returns. Cycle will be nearly finished. You'll, you'll be able to collect them within the hour. I'll send someone. Right, we won't keep you any longer. Um, I believe we already have your fingerprints on file. Oh, wh why would you require my fingerprints? To eliminate them at the scene. I I'm not sure they'd be much use. I wore rubber gloves throughout the clean. Yeah, but you might have left some stray ones. This is... Nothing to worry about, Roy. It is purely standard procedure. Right, I see. Well, if, if I can be of any further assistance to you, you, you know where I am? Yeah, we do. How long have this lot been here? About an hour. Have they said anything? Not to me. I mean, why would they? It's like they're settling in for the night, though. It's a lot of people for a missing person. Yeah, I know. Look, whatever's happened, there's no point in us staying here all night, is there? And they're not going to tell us anything. You can go home if you want. I'm not going anywhere. Sarge, found a lot of tennis under the mattress. How much is there? About 200. Right. If you were going to do a flip, why would 
would you leave 200 quid behind? It could be towards the rent that she owed. No, you'd leave it on the counter. You wouldn't hide it. Besides, it doesn't really chime with what we know about her. Yeah, I suppose not. At least it's something. Mrs Mop seems we've got rid of everything else. Mrs Mop? Yeah, the cafe guy who'd snapped on his marigolds so promptly. <sighs> There's something not right about all that. Yeah, but I know Roy and, well, it's exactly the sort of thing that he would do. For a former employee hardly knew? No, for Evelyn. Them two. They're dead close and he would not want to see her short money-wise. Mm. Sarge, we're going to apply the luminol. Go for it. Kill the lights. Oh, that is not a nosebleed.